Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to another Medical Projects webinar. Um, just waiting for the last few students to log in, so we'll make a start on the introductions anyway, and the, the, I'm sure they'll join us soon. Um, welcome, my name is Mark Williams. I work here at Medical Projects. Um, we help students um, get places at medical school. Um, we do that through a lot of things, through a lot of kind of online courses that we run, lots of free articles, blogs, videos, uh, just helping provide all the kind of support that, that students need when they're applying to, to medical school, because it's, it's quite a difficult and challenging process. And one of the things that one of those challenging processes um, is, is taking the UCAT. Um, it's something that some students say that you can't revise for, um, but that's rubbish. So don't listen to them at all. You absolutely can revise for the UCAT and you absolutely should revise for the UCAT. Um, but it's quite a tricky, it's quite a tricky exam. It's quite high stakes. You've got kind of one chance to take it each year as well. So you've kind of got to get it right. And you've got to know what you're doing with it. So we're kind of at the very start of our UCAT journey. It, kind of we're only just into May so I'm guessing that a lot of you will be thinking about the UCAT starting that research phase where you're just learning about it um, learning about the different sections the types of questions um, and just trying to work out what it is um, if there's anybody that's kind of already into your revision like fantastic you're, you're ahead of the game if you're at that stage but I'm guessing the most of you are still in that that research phase um, so what we want to cover tonight is um, just a kind of a mini introduction workshop um, to a couple of types of questions. Um, so this webinar is not going to cover every single section in lots and lots of detail. It's going to cover two sections in a little bit of detail and give you some of the, the kind of the starter tools that you're going to need when you when you're going to take on these two sections anyway um, we will be planning to do lots more on the other types of questions as well so this is just a an introduction to abstract reasoning and verbal reasoning as well just to give you um a quick brief overview of kind of what we're doing tonight um it'll be kind of 20 25 minutes of going through uh, a couple of different types of questions and then we'll open up to your kind of questions as well so we will be using the Q&A function, which is down at the bottom. So if you do have any questions, please use the, the Q&A function later. Um, and we use the upvote system as well, where if somebody else has asked a question that you also want asking, then you can just hit the thumbs up button. And it brings it to the top so we know which questions to try and, um, to try and answer. We will try and get through as many as possible. Um, but when you've got kind of five, 600 students asking questions, um, we're, we're probably not going to get through all of them um, before kind of eight o'clock. Um, we will try and finish before eight o'clock. Um, we don't want to take up too much of your evening. And we will send um, a recording out and a copy of the slides as well. So um, if you don't worry about kind of taking too many notes, um, we'll send all of this out to you so you can look back on it. We're using poll questions as well. Um, just an interactive tool just to... to help engagement It's also we're going to kind of test you with a couple of questions as well just to see um you know we're not marking them at all it's just to kind of give you the chance to to, to try a couple of ucat style questions this evening as well cool so i'm just going to quickly throw up a poll before we kind of jump into it um so this is more about kind of what you what you want from the ucat so it's what score are you aiming for in the ucat some of you might know what score you're aiming for. Some of you might not know yet. Um, so don't worry if, you, if you're not sure. But this is just to kind of get a feel of where we're kind of pitching the level um, of, the, of the conversation this evening. So we'll just give that another couple of seconds whilst everybody votes you can see that most people have kind of voted now once we get to about 85 percent cool so i'm just going to share the results um obviously the scores that we put here are the the averaged scores um of the four that are marked in this way um so this is just a, a general overall kind of score it's not the the, the, the total score um, so 
yeah, some ambitious UCAT scores. A lot of people want to score 700 plus, 750 plus, 800 plus. Um, some really, really strong scores. If, if if you're anything above 700, you're you're in a really, really good. Um, that's a really good UCAT score. 750 plus, you're you're smashing it. So if you're getting 800 plus, um, you're you're within the top, kind of, probably five percent, maybe less, three percent of in the UK out of the 25,000 people that take it every year. So, some super ambitious people. Um, cool. Right. So let's jump into it. This will be a really good time to bring Mini on as well. Hey, Mini. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. How um, how's your week been so far? Yeah, it's been good. Been been quiet with uh, COVID getting in the way of everything, but been nice to get some studying in in between clinics and everything. So, yeah, it's been all right. <laughs> so, just to give people um, a super brief overview of kind of um, of who you are, what you're doing at the moment, um, because there'll be some people watching this that have, have never watched one of our webinars before. Do you want to just give like a super brief overview of? kind of who you are where you're at yeah so so my name's Minnie um I'm currently at um University of Manchester um I'm in my clinical years at the moment so I spent three years doing preclinical at St Andrews on that sort of route and then um once I finished that I came to Manchester so I've done one clinical year here and on my second one so just on trauma and orthopedics at the moment and rheumatology and enjoying it so uh yeah that's where i'm at at the moment so ucats a while ago for me it was actually called the uk cat when i did it so but uh, hopefully i'll give you some good tips tonight to to succeed you have happy memories of the of the ucat or uk cat as it was called back then surprisingly happy actually i was really dreading it because practice like it was tough for me um i found it quite difficult especially at the start just getting used to the questions but you know I was pleased with how I did and got in in the end so um it's a tough exam but I think if you prepare well then there's you know no reason you can't get a really good score on it so you know coming okay, to the webinar cool. is a great start yeah and especially at this kind of time of year early May the definitely super prepared so super, super good, head prepared. Start. good head <laughs> yeah, start yeah definitely Cool. So we're going to be looking at two different sections. So obviously the, the, there's five sections in total on the, the UCAT. Um, four of them are kind of scored in a, in a kind of zero to 900 type banding. And then the others, the, the SJT or the situational judgment tests are your banded kind of one to four. So we're going to be looking at the ones this evening that are probably seen as the most difficult, the most tricky. Mm -hmm. Um, the ones people struggle with the most uh, and that's the abstract reasoning and the the verbal reasoning um so which one which one do you want to start with go for abstract but i feel like that's a scary one we'll get the scary one out of the way because it's actually i think it's easier than you think um yeah. the verbal is just difficult but so we'll save that one for the end when you're all when you're all in in get your heads in the game okay cool all right let's have a look at this then cool let's go for it so just a quick overview of abstract reasoning and, and what it is basically. So the UCAT definition for what it's you know assessing is it's assessing your uh, use of convergent and divergent thinking to infer relationships through information. So it's a big jumble of words really. Basically it's just assessing your pattern recognition. Can you think outside of the box and, and pick up stuff from a very limited amount of information? Um, so you've got 55 questions and 13 minutes to answer it, plus one minute of reading instructions. So it's not a lot of time to, to answer these questions. So it's about practicing a lot. I think it's the one that you want to practice the most, especially at the start, just to get used to the questions and pick up different patterns. Because, you know, there's only a limited amount of, you know, patterns that they can actually, you know, come up with, really. So getting used to that is... Um, definitely one thing to go for so here's like an example one down here uh, you've got two sets of of patterns and then like a test shape and you have to basically um say which where which one it fits in with so with this one that um you can say that it fits in um with set a because um just to explain it that you see every time there's a black circle 
um, the next shape rotates 90 degrees clockwise on this side and 90 degrees anti-clockwise on this side. And then you see with the test shape, it's rotating 90 degrees clockwise. So that's like, it's quite, you, I looked at this before and I wouldn't have picked up on it straight away. So um, that's just kind of, you know, one of the things that um, we'll go through tonight and hopefully you'll start to pick up on, on these patterns and, and be able to recognize, but at first it's just like, oh my God, what's happening? So um, here's a tip that, um, a, mnemon a mnemonic that um, is really useful to go through when you're doing this because it's just, um, it's easy to get overwhelmed. So first one is shape. Uh, so looking what shapes are there, uh, that, you know, four-sided shapes, three-sided shapes, are they curved? Um, how many are there? And then color, are they, so it's in black and white always, but are they filled in, um, black? Um, how many are of each color? Um, arrangement as well, so how are they arranged in a box or um, in space, is there? always a circle in the corner is there always a triangle next to a square and um, things like that number so how many are there is does each box have three shapes in does um you know a box next to a two shaped box have three in or you know there's there's loads of possibilities um and size is there any relationship to the size of the shape so um is the size getting bigger as, as the boxes go on or um, is the square always bigger when it's next to a circle and um, things like that so I think it's just practicing with that just so you're not completely thrown as soon as you see um, a, a question that you're just you have no clue with um, um, about basically so we'll go on to I, a really quick um, practice question and um, we'll throw up a poll for it I'll give you I'll say because it's your first might, might be some of your first time doing it I'll give you say a minute um, and I'll give you a question and I'll put up the poll and see what you guys think is the answer so I think it's this one yeah so Mark if you could put the poll up do you want me to put the poll up at the end so I'll give them a minute to look at it then I'll put the yeah, poll up go you can that. go back to the previous slide if you want so I'll start the timer um now so everyone's got a minute from now to have a look at this question Okay, that's one minute. So I've just popped the poll up now. This one's a little bit easier than the, the example that you went through before. That first example was yeah, just horrible. Yeah, so it was really bad. I was like, give an example and go through it. I won't be difficult and make them answer it. <laughs> yeah, I was stuck on that one for a little bit. Yeah, well, would this, this whole kind of point of this webinar is just to introduce you to some mm. of the the methods introduce you to that scans mnemonic it's not to kind of get into all the really really difficult ones it's yeah. just like here's a tool you need to start using this tool Go start looking it. through these so i'll just end that poll and i'll bring up the results it's all anonymous as well so so don't worry about um if you kind of put a different answer awesome so most people saying set a um so i'll go through sort of scans this is the way uh we looked at it so uh starting starting off with shape you can see that set a um they all have curved edges so that's the most obvious thing whereas set b all straight lines sharp edges so that's the most obvious difference 
And then looking at the test shapes, you can see both have curved edges. So that's your first hint that you're probably gonna, um, it's probably gonna belong in set A. But, you know, go through the whole thing. It's not, it's not definite. You know, there might be something else that says it's set B. So don't go straight in um, straight away, you know, carry on with you know what you've learned you've using this mnemonic you've got a you know a structure um so then looking at color as well um you can count the number of shapes that are black versus shapes that are white um not really any pattern there there's you know um three three white and and seven black and um and then four four black on this one and and um six white so you know there's not really any relationship that you can kind of grasp there arrangement you know all the boxes have pretty much you know random numbers of shapes um and you know um they're not the same shapes as well so as you saw in the first one the all the shapes were the same and they were moving around um whereas this one there's no relationship between you know the different shapes and not the same shapes you know changing arrangements so doesn't really have any significance there number so both sets contain 10 shapes so you're thinking there might be something going on there so um in set a there's two boxes consisting of two shapes uh so this box here and if you can see my mouse i don't know if you can see my mouse but top left and then the middle uh, right one on set a both have two shapes in whereas in set b there aren't any boxes with two shapes in and obviously the test test box has two shapes in so again another thing um leading you towards set a and then size and symmetry, the shapes, you know, uh, there doesn't seem to be any relationship regarding the size of the shapes. You know, it's pretty much random. Um, so, yeah, so you've got two, two things there, the shape um, having curved edges and then the fact that there's two shapes in the box um, leads you to giving the answer of A. So um, set A. So most of you got that right, really well done. And, you know, those of you that didn't like it, um, that's a tough question, especially, you know, uh, we're right at the start of, you know, getting used to UCAT at the moment. So I think having that scans in your head and just having a good structure is, is really important. So just practice, 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 really. Yeah, I think another thing there is just that, you know, you might just see the round shapes and think automatically, OK, set mm -hmm. A. And sometimes they can throw that kind of question in there, but then there's something else that changes it. Exactly. So yeah. you have to kind of go through that entire process, that entire scans method to make sure that it's not B sometimes, because mm -hmm. sometimes it can be they sneaky and just be like, oh, it looks like it should belong there. Yeah. But then you've got something to do with symmetry. Mm -hmm. there's, there's kind of at the end of your, your breakdown and you'll get it wrong. Definitely. So it looks looks simple but go through the method and make sure it is the correct answer and don't just kind of guess too quickly mm -hmm. Definitely. especially when you're just getting started as well that pattern recognition builds and when you come to to take your UK at the end you'll be so fast at those and you'll you'll be doing them in, in seconds um and you, you'll find that you probably have a bit of time left over in that section um even though there's only what 11 13 minutes or something for that yeah, it's section really quick but yeah, it's one of the easiest sections. It. it looks really difficult, but becomes one of the easiest sections with practice. Definitely. That was, that was what happened to me. This section now looks the easiest because it's just reading, <laughs> but actually it's, no. it's the worst section by miles. It's the hardest section for, for most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So, so yeah, verbal reasoning, they say on the website, assesses your ability to cricket critically evaluate information presented in a written form so it's basically like comprehension tests that you would have done for your sats really um you've got a big chunk of information and you've got questions regarding what you've sort of understood or um information you've gained from the text so you've got 11 passages um and four questions on each and 44 minutes uh 44 questions sorry in total obviously four times 11 um, and then 21 minutes to answer those questions. So it's, it's, it's pretty quick. So you've got to read, well, kind of, I'll go on to how you probably um, should go about it. But um, yeah, there's a lot to do in that time. I think it's probably the most time pressured section. At least it was for me. I ended up at the end just 
that click in um, because I think the time management is really, really difficult. So yeah, um, lower scoring section on the UCAT. Um, yeah, it's it was my lowest scoring section despite it being the highest in practice. I think it's just nerves as well at the start of the exam. Um, it's, it's scary times. Um, so I think we've got a poll question for the next bit. So um, I'll maybe give, hmm, how long do you think? Like 30, 40 seconds a question? Um, yeah, I think that's, I, I think that's generous. But yeah, think I think 40, if, if it's the first time anybody's seen one of these and it's the first time they've read that kind of volume of text mm. and to answer yeah let's go with 40 seconds so okay. what do you want to do do you want to just put it straight up and then i launch the poll after 40 seconds do you want me to do that or if you put it put the poll up straight away or is that really harsh i think if you put the poll up straight away it covers the, the question does it yeah okay and then add okay yeah that's fine okay if you go so, to the next so slide I'll start the timer and then I'll put the poll up. And then you oh, can go I didn't backwards. even go through this as well. Oh, this has moved. <laughs> so this will probably be, <laughs> I'll go through this quickly. So, um, and then you can come up with how we're going to do it. Okay. Um, right, so, right. Um, so the first like common technique is, is, is skim reading. So there's a lot of text to read um, before answering the question. So sometimes you, you, you don't want to read the whole text properly. Like if you're reading a book, don't don't do that straight away there's a lot that you can gain from literally just skim reading so just last across the lines picking up key important words that you think you know might come up um and you know it's you can get quick at skim reading as well i'd say literally just you know pull up a magazine or newspaper article and just get good at reading it quickly and seeing what information you can pick up and then pinpointing keyword. So um, does the question ask about a certain thing that say um, animal rights? Um, can you find that in the text quickly? Just see me through and, and can you find that? And then look at what's around it and what you can infer from that little bit of text. And then worst case scenario is you just, you read the text because you have no other idea. But again, that's, very time consuming so it's like a risk reward do you just you know read it properly and know you're getting the question right or do you just take a chance and you know pop an answer in and save yourself time for the next question so but that's about practice and experience so um yeah I'd say top tip is get good at skim reading and just picking up as much as you can without actually properly reading it um so I think the next slide is the text so Okay, well, if you go to the next slide, I'll start the timer. And then okay. when I say stop, go back a slide and then I'll put the poll up. So it takes okay. the, the, the text off the screen. Okay. Yeah. Go. Oh, I didn't realize the question was like, okay. Go back. Right, I'll put a poll up. Um, is it A, B, C? Yes. Oh, I'll launch a poll. Right, have a go at that one. Some good scores on this question. We're starting nice and easy, to be fair. The next two are worse yeah i'm just happy no one's put d <laughs> oh one person has gone okay um most people kind of 85 86 percent uh, have voted cool. most of you went for a shall we should we go through the answers like now or should we wait until the answers at the end yeah we can do if we're doing it like this or 
Is the text up next to the answers? No. Okay. Um, no, uh, but then I've all got the a feeling they're all on one, on one slide. Yeah. So well, we... we we know we know that A is correct. So everybody that voted yeah. for A. Um, Really well done. I say, um, well, so, I'll stop sharing that now. Yeah, we'll go. I say, go through at the end. So I'm not right. leaving the text okay. up. So I'll Fine. go on. So we'll do another. So most people voted for A. If you did, if you voted for A or whatever you voted for, just make a note, note of it down. somewhere. So then when we come to the, the answers for, the, for this piece of text, we'll go through those answers and you can kind of almost mark yourself. Um, do you want to go to question two? And we'll do 40 do seconds it. again. Yeah. Okay, time starts now. Okay, polls up again. Oh, I can't move the slides. Okay. Be more of a mix with this one. Mm. Get a bit more difficult. We're about 80% people have voted now, so we'll give it another couple of seconds and then Make sure you're writing them down at home as well, because we'll come back to, to these. So I'll end the poll and I'll quickly share the results just so everybody kind of gets a feel for, for where we're at with this question. So A has most, but B is only just behind. C has got about 19% and D has got 8%. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've had most people went for A on the first one, A and B mainly on the second one. Okay. Let's um, see. The third one. Third one. Okay. Okay, starting now. Okay, that's 40 seconds. You want to go back? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm going forward. Okay, hopefully I'm smart. <laughs> right, I'll launch the poll for this one as well. Oh, wow, it was all instantly, like, <laughs> all the same. So, again, this is even closer. Oh, my A God. with 31%. B with 27%, C with 22%, D with 19%. So really, really mixed. But these are kind of the, so what we've done with these three kind of questions is, yes, you've got a passage of text, you've got three questions. First question is a relatively easy one where you can use one of these techniques to, to almost skim read and pick things out. But then the second question and third question require a bit more knowledge of the text and a bit more reading of the question as well. So we've tried to give mm -hmm. you like three stages of difficulty in these questions. Um, and then you can actually see that in the, the spread of the answers as well. So we'll go through each of these questions and we'll talk through why it's correct. Um, so I'll end that poll and I'll share the results just so everyone can kind of see. Wow, yeah, really close, close on that, that third one. Yeah. Cool, should we talk questions. through? Yeah, yeah, really tough questions. Okay, so question one was A, because it's true. Um, so that was basically like looking at the keywords, you just look out for 
the name that was given in the question, Margaret Hodge or tax avoidance, and then just zone in straight on that. And um, if I can go back, oh no. Um, and it says, has long campaigned. So, I mean, not exactly word for word, but yeah, that was um, just, it was basically in a text. Um, so that's just about getting quick at, at picking out keywords. Um, so question two, the right answer was B. Um, so Luxembourg unit uh, handles sales only from European countries. So um, with A, um, which was, um, it's handled by exactly 5,262 employees. So basically with that, um, it doesn't say that those countries were specifically only um, served by the Luxembourg unit, it, they could be served by other units as well. So it's not just that number of staff which are at the Luxembourg unit which are working for those other countries. And the same for C as well. Um, Amazon sales in the UK is handled exclusively by the Luxembourg unit. So this is quite difficult because it is served by a Luxembourg unit, but it never specifically in the text says that it's not served by any other um, unit. Um, and uh, the Luxembourg unit made an income of 8.4 uh, million uh, euros, which um, is wrong because it was per employee rather than for the whole unit. Um, and B is obviously right because, um, I say obviously, it's not obvious, but um, so it basically gives you a definitive list there of who it serves and that's it. So the UK, France, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, Spain, Sweden, that, that's it. That's um, who the Luxembourg unit serves. So that's why B is correct. Um, so question three, uh, the answer was A. Um, so with that, so B, uh, we can, we know is, is correct because if you go to, um, the, the last bit of the passage, we can say that, uh, the pandemic, um, while our high streets have struggled, um, so that's, we can get that from the text instantly. Um, Amazon made a loss of over 1 billion. You can find that in, in the first passage. So made a loss of 1.2 billion. So again, you can look out for 1 billion or if you look out for um, the Euro symbol in the text and just sort of scan through and find that, um, then you sort of instantly there and just look across that sentence and see that. And then Amazon's revenue has been high during the pandemic. So, Amazon's revenue soared again in the in the last paragraph. So just again, keyword look out for revenue. Um, quite hard spot, but I think by the third question, you've sort of got not used to the text, but have looked at it enough that it will pop out to you a bit more. And then why A is in why we cannot infer A is because it only mentions one MP um, who is from Labour. Um, but we can't infer from the text that the whole party is, is against tax avoidance. But I mean, um, we do know that in real life, the Labour Party are against tax avoidance, but this is a thing where you have to draw a line in verbal reasoning between your own knowledge and what's in the text that you have to specifically use what's in the text. You can't, you know, um, yeah, be using your own, your own um, sort of, background knowledge on on anything to answer the question because you know you you'll be you know putting in answers that you know that aren't written there and you know aren't sent in the text so, so just be careful with that it's just like a the warning just literally only use what's in the text and then basically the same point again is that um you only need to know what's in the text so unit i mean, i don't really know what a unit the definition is but um and like in terms of just the, the tax credits and, and um, profits and stuff. You don't actually need to know about what all that means. Um, the questions will be designed so that you don't actually have to understand per se the whole text, just being able to understand the key points and comprehend that and answer the question. So um, it can throw you off if you don't know what it's talking about, but you will be able to answer the question no matter how much it will try and throw you with big words and language that you haven't seen before.
Yeah, and just a, a thing about the the two different types of questions. So if you're going through very quickly, question two and question three can look almost identical mm -hmm. and you can read them in the same way. But quite often what they, they love to do, they just change one word and that can be inferred, changes to cannot be inferred and you get a whole different question and you go from trying to find one answer that matches that, that can be inferred mm -hmm. to having to identify three answers that can be inferred from the text and find the fourth that cannot so it's really really important that you read the question properly and yeah. under the time pressure it's fine when we're doing a webinar like this and you write okay we've got 40 seconds to read the question but yeah. when you're in that time pressure under exam conditions they're the mistakes that we see loads of students make and it's the different like they know the answers yeah. if they just read the question correctly um so you know it's just we, we throw it in there in this webinar just to show you we're not going to go through everything in absolute detail with you but we've tried to show you a scans method for the abstract reasoning which will um which you'll have to learn and just get used to you'll you'll spend time going through that and then we're just trying to point out a couple of key things with the verbal reasoning um so just being able to scan really quickly for things, making sure that you read the question is really important, um, making sure that you don't use your external knowledge from things. And if you can take those four things from this kind of last half an hour, then that's a really good start from for your UCAT stuff. Um, you know, we could cover this. It, we can take days to cover these things, um, mm -hmm. and we do on our, our courses, but... If you can take those four things from tonight's webinar, then that's that's a really, really good start. Mm -hmm. It's just about practice, practice, practice. Like you've got yeah. a solid structure now, so just put it to use and just do loads of questions, as many questions as you can. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oops, um, so. Yeah, we'll, we're going to jump into some questions. Um, before we jump into some questions, I just want to let you know that we've still got some spaces on our GP Live course this weekend um we've only got 10 spaces left um so i was just going to offer it to anybody on the webinar tonight if you want to join the the gp live course this weekend um there's a discount code there normally the course is 159 pounds um but if you use that code um this evening it's discounted to to less than 100 left to 99 pounds um, we've got 10 spaces we'd like to fill those spaces up with students from this webinar so use that code um and hopefully we'll see some of you on the the gp live course this weekend as well um cool shall we ask some questions use Let's the q a for it. the last kind of like 10 15 minutes sounds good right okay i'm just going to go to the q a um and see what questions we've got in here do do so are there any free ucat practice questions online um there's loads absolutely yes. loads um just Google free UCAT question bank and you'll probably find about 20. Mm -hmm. um, a really good one that um, I've used in the past is called Pass Medicine. They're, they're a pretty decent one. Um, did you use Pass Medicine? I didn't, but I do now for my exams okay. um, and like everyone uses Pass Medicine. It's just like, it's a massive thing in medical school. So um, yeah. that is great and it does explanations and things. So. so yeah, Google, but there's one recommendation for that one. Um, and at the UCAT website, I found low state, and it's quite nice as well because um, it's sort of on the type of program. Like it's the same setup as they use on the computers on the day. So it's quite nice to getting to get used to how it actually looks on the screen. Um, yeah. So so try that as well. And they've got like a hundred at least for each each bit. So try that as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and put some links in as well. I know that people um, want links, so I'll try and put some links in the chat as well. And um, this one from Hannah, are you expected to get through all the questions in the time given? Depends how fast you get. I mean, I didn't, I remember, especially the verbal reasoning that why it got to the last minute and um, I was running out of time. So I don't think it's, I don't think most people get through the questions. Um, but I think that's fine. I think as long as you're really confident um, in 
your skills and revision that you've done um and that like the questions you have done you you know have done your best in then i think that it's fine i think it's just, it's just time management practice at the end of the day um to get as good as possible but i think on the day like if you have to guess a couple then absolutely fine yeah i think so time management is one of the things that we cover so we have two courses when we talk about when we talk about our courses we have our crash course which covers all the basics um, and then we have the master class um, which is all about getting the the really kind of high ucat scores and time management is a big chunk of the master class type um, course um, and it's because it's really difficult to do mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of practice and a lot of preparation and a lot of discipline to get right so even if you're running out of time when you get to like the masterclass type level you know that you're running out of time and you know which questions to guess on as well so you can actually start to minimize or minimize the questions that you're not going to answer or when you get very clever and very good at the ucat you start to leave the questions you know are going to take the most time until the end so you get through all the questions that you know you're going to get right and then you have a bank of really difficult questions that you come back to when you like flag and review them. So you can get through them all if you're really good with your time management, but realistically, you're going to miss some of them and it's missing the right ones. But that's like a an advanced technique that <laughs> we cover. Level, yeah, yeah <laughs> it's, it's next level stuff that. <laughs> Um, what is the best way to approach the verbal reasoning questions without spending too much time on one question? Just, I think, just practice that that skim reading. I think again, it's just getting quick and just being able to just be able to pick out the right keywords as well. Um, yeah, I think it, it is difficult though. I think it, it again, it's just practice, but. Um, knowing when to skip as well mm. is something that we talk about is if you if you get bogged down with something flag it move on just because you yeah. know you know you're going to take too much time so so don't waste too much time and you yeah use the flag system it's really good so you know what to go back to at the end so you're not you know flicking through the questions trying to trying to see which ones you've you've guessed on um really popular question um when is it best to start revising for the ucat well, you're here now, so you've already started. So well done. <laughs> yeah. um, Honestly, your, when... when did I start? I don't think I started super duper. I definitely didn't start this early. I think, I think I must have given myself at least, I think maybe six weeks. I gave myself or six to eight weeks or something. Um, but I just did a little bit every day. I just did, you know, like half an hour, an hour, and I got up. So I don't think. I mean, some of you that if you're going for 800 plus, then like I go for it um, and and start now. But I don't think, yeah, don't don't go ham and spend all your time doing it from today. Uh, you don't need to. Um, just give you just give yourself enough time. Like, yeah, I don't know how. A couple of months. I think a couple of months, of months yeah. is is realistic. Um, starting now everybody's already here so mm -hmm. that's a really good step so i add classes this has already started just keep doing a little bit for the next few weeks mm -hmm. keep learning um and then when you get to may june slash yeah. july then like go at it mm -hmm. uh, is the 1250 ucat questions book helpful yeah no it is well it was back in my day it was only 600 and and it served me very well so yeah i'd recommend it and it's quite nice having something on paper as well um that you can make notes on and stuff so um yeah it, it is good and you know it's just it's just nice to just have something to fly through questions on so go for um, it holly has asked will we will there be another webinar for other sections of the exam Yes, uh, this is literally just the first one we've done on the UCAT type questions. So we're going to do loads more um, when we get closer to UCAT time as well. We'll probably try and do one every week um, just to keep everybody's revision on track. So, yes, we will be doing more. Um, another Hannah has also asked, what is a good score for applying for top universities such as Cambridge? Well, Cambridge doesn't Cambridge use the UCAT. Yeah. So um, if you're applying, make sure you check which entrance exam 
the universities you're applying to once. Um, Cambridge does a different entrance exam. Um, but generally, if you're applying to one of the universities that's um, considered like a, a high UCAT score, if they then anything kind of above 700 is is what you're going to be needing for those. Mm. Um, but yeah, Newcastle's I think, on, yeah, say? I was just going to say that I don't think UCAT score really like, I don't, it doesn't really correlate with, you know, like top, I suppose with medicine, the rankings doesn't really matter as much, but um, yeah, like Newcastle, as you're saying, is, is really high. It's, I think it's just check, check the website and our past webinar, we went through who uses it more but it's, I don't think it correlates with, you know, who's number one to three has the highest UCAT, you know? No, it doesn't. Yeah. So it, it's not, Cut it's off. not like, oh, I, I want to apply to Cambridge, Imperial, mm. Kings, therefore my UCAT score needs to be high. It doesn't yeah. work like that. They use it in very different ways. Um, yeah. So check each university's website. We're also going to have um, a blog about this soon as well. So have a look at our blogs. Make sure you kind of subscribe to that and we'll, we'll send you kind of the UCAT rankings for the universities as well so you can see them all. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Is using Medify UCAT prep worth it? I don't think I use Medify, so I don't know if I'm qualified to, to, to say, but I think... Um, like if, if you've had a look at the website and it looks like something that you get a lot out of and that looks worth it, then why not, you know, go for it. But I, I've not used it myself, so I'm not really sure, to be honest. Yeah, I think there's the, there's a couple of different camps of people. There's people that are like, you know, you shouldn't pay for for online question banks. You shouldn't pay for for kind of courses and things and then there's other people that are like well if if i need a little extra help then i will um and people fall across that spectrum some people will do absolutely great just by using all the free resources some people will pay for kind of an online question bank like medify and various other people and that'll work for them and some people will want the the kind of the the types of things that we do where it's like a full day course and that works well for them. And it's just about making sure that you find which one works for you, really. If you, if you find that you're using all the free UCAT, all the, all the free question banks, and you're not getting the scores you want, then maybe think about, you know, looking for a bit of extra help in whatever form that is. I agree. Um, how does the scoring work? Well, that's a complicated question. <laughs> so it's like you get a point per question and then it's then sort of just put in a calculator and you basically get a score between is it 500 and 900 yeah. and that's basically what you want to be looking at is that that's the score I mean raw points you know you don't really find out about as long as you know what your average score is you know is it 650 is it 700 and what's your SJT band that's that's the important bit so you don't you don't really need to know it's just you know point per question no negative marking as well so don't be afraid to to, to have a guess uh, if you're running out of time and then yeah just kind of know what your score is at the end yeah you, you'll you'll get two different variations of score so you'll get something like 650 like we quoted before or you'll get mm -hmm. 2900 something like that. Mm -hmm. And the 2,900 is four sections of 500 to 900. And then the 650, they've just divided by four. So if you're seeing, oh, I'm getting a, or you, people are saying, oh, I'm getting 725 on my, my tests. And other people mm -hmm. saying, well, I'm getting 3,000. They, you just need to divide it by four. Yeah, it's just their um, average. Over there. And just work off those two numbers. Mm -hmm. Just know that 650 plus, is good or 3000 or 3200 good plus right that's all you need to know really mm -hmm. um we'll just take a couple more just because i'm conscious of the time this evening um do, do, do we kind of covered that one so when would you start recommending revising a couple of months before um is there a certain skill needed for abstract reasoning or does it depend on practice yeah i don't think there's a certain skill i think that 
I think it is really about practice. I mean, um, as you said before, it's I think it's the one that scares most people at the start um, because you've never done anything like it before. It's awful. Um, but you do you do get used to it, and the more you do it, the more you just pick up patterns and again just use that scans method um just so you don't get you know overwhelmed and just start getting terrified of the questions because i mean they're, they're they're made that they are able to be you know worked out and people should you know you know be able to see these patterns so um yeah i think that i don't think you need to you know have a a great pattern recognition skills from the get-go to be good at it I think just work hard and um, knuckle down and practice it yeah it will it will come it will yeah. you, you will get it, it. Take time, it, but... it just takes time and just keep track of your scores and you'll see them yeah. improving um, and if you're really struggling use not use a free online question bank if you're still struggling try a paid one and if you need more help then then find somebody that can give you a bit more kind of one-to-one -one advice and support as well um, it is an exam that you can you can smash if you practice really hard and mm. you, you're smart with your revision um, and it seems scary now but in three months time it'll be an absolute breeze for everybody and we'll have loads of webinars and workshops along that process as well so that's just a little taster for this evening um we can't get through all the questions um because there's kind of 650 questions or whatever to get through but um hopefully that's just a little bit of help for this evening uh our next webinar will be in a couple of weeks as well so hopefully we'll see some of you then and um maybe some of you will be on that gp live course as well with us this saturday as well um, really appreciate you joining us um, and thanks very much Minnie. Um, fantastic as always um, yeah have a good week have a good week everybody and we'll see you next time bye everyone